Hello and welcome back to Data Simplified and today I'm going to show you how to create a funnel chart in Google Sheets. The reason you might want to do this is because unlike Excel, Google Sheets does not come with a predefined option of a funnel chart. So in order to do this, we have to create our own little way around it. So as you will see here, I have some data as usual. I've got months of the year, then I've got baskets of clothes in, I've got sales, I've got a column called helper and I've got the conversion rate of how many baskets with clothes in actually convert into become sales. So you may want to create a funnel chart in order to see just clearly in a nice visualisation how many baskets with clothes in are actually converting into sales. So in order to do this, we need to create another table just because it's easier to visualise that way and we need to include the helper column. So what we'll do is in this example, we will do it as though we are going to create it for January. So basket with clothes in, and we have sales. Then up here, we're going to put helper for our helper column. I'll explain more about that in a minute. Then we are going to have our total, and then we are going to have our conversion. So the total is nice and easy. As I said, we're doing January. I'm just going to equal that to the baskets of closing for January. And then I'm going to equal that to the sales for January. And again, the conversion rate is just going to be the one that I created for January. So again, I'll just equal that just so it's nice and easy for us. Now for the helper column, the formula that you're going to want to use is equals open bracket max open bracket and then you're going to want to select the range of data from your totals so in our case these two then you're going to want to close the bracket then you're going to want to minus the cell that you're looking at so in our case we're looking at e14 then what you're going to want to do is close the bracket and divide by two. And you can drag the formula down. However, again, just going to want to change that because you're only really concerned with looking at your data range, which is E14 and E15. And you'll see we've now populated a zero and a rather long number. But stick with me as this is where this comes in handy. So then I'm going to insert a graph or a chart as they call it here and it suggests the column chart we don't want that one what we want is we want a stacked bar chart so select the stacked bar chart I'll just move it out of the way of the data so you can see what we're doing and with this what it's done is it's actually done this the wrong way around for us we don't want it to be this way around at all so what we're going to do is we're going to do that so that we've got the baskets with clothes in and the sales going across. And then the helper, the total and the conversion as our data in the actual table. Now, as you can see, we're already getting something that resembles a funnel ever so slightly there. So what we need to do is we want to get rid of this helper column now. So it's done what it's needed to do. It's put the red bar where it needs to be, but we don't want to see that. So if we go on the series, we go to the helper column, fill it white to get rid of it. Make sure the line colour is white too. We don't want to be seeing that whatsoever. Line type dash. Then what we're going to want to do also for the helper column is we're going to want to make sure that we can't see the text. So text column helper column, we're going to put to that. And that wasn't for the helper column. Sorry there, guys, that was for all of them. There we go, the text colour there, you have to click on the text specifically as you saw that I did there. And then you're going to put that to white just so it disappears for us. Then the next thing that I like to do is go on these grid lines. If you click them directly, you can then uncheck major grid lines. And then the final thing I like to do is with conversion. If we click on conversion again, I want that to be white because we don't want to see it. Then if we go back to customise, back to series, and we click on conversion, 
Again, I'm gonna make the fill color white so we can't see it. However, I'm gonna turn on the data labels for conversion, because we do want to see those. And I'm going to make their text color, let's go with the yellow, shall we? Just so then we've got a nice conversion percentage going down. And there you have it. We could do a bit more formatting, like we could obviously put, obviously grab the legend here, and we could put that at the bottom, because I think that looks better. And then obviously grab our title, sort of centralize that a bit, make it bold, maybe make it black, and change it to something more descriptive. But there you have it. You now have a funnel created manually in Google Sheets, and you can do this for three or four different things. You just need to list them down here. So for example, if after people put the baskets in the clothes, I don't know what they could do with them, um, visited checkout page, And let's just say 789 people did that. And all we would need to do is make sure that we've got the formula in here as well. Again, you need to update it to contain the whole range. You could just obviously um, stick the cells to being where they are. And then as if by magic, you've obviously got another row of the funnel. And again, in conversion, you can put your conversion in there and that will then just populate next to the bit of the funnel. It has undone our formatting for us though. So we'll just put it back to percentages and then you've got three rows in the funnel. And you can have as many of these as you like really. I've never really needed to go before beyond five or six, um, but I can't see a particular reason why it would stop you because it wouldn't stop you with bars. Thank you for watching.